Welcome, Brosha McGuire, please. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, for the Fears film, I felt I had to, um, I had to create its own uh, language to express that film because it seems to be a stretch for what I mean. You saw the earlier work. I, I come from like doing children's books, and it was kind of always on the lighter side. And then when the, I was given the opportunity to do that film, I felt I had to kind of create its own universe to fit. And um, I guess you had the restriction already of it being having to be black and white. True. That was yeah, one that was of one the, of the restrictions yeah. going in. The, the yeah. producers had the idea of making. They already had the title, and they said, "Okay, it's a." It's going to be a scary film, and can you do it? And um, but when I was doing research for trying to find a, uh, you know, how I'm going to enter, I found the work of um, Felix Valaton, who is a um, Swiss um, graphic artist. He was actually a painter too, but his graphic work is it running in the late 19th century? Yeah, that late sort of time? 19th century. Mm. And um, it um, he he would often do that trick of black on black like you know someone wearing black against a black background and as soon as i saw that i thought okay that i'm i'm going to use that you know when they said can you do a, a a film about fear i was listing all these my own phobias and you know i write down my dreams usually so i was like looking up nightmares and things and i was and i found a short story that was like a ghost story and i thought okay this is going to be good this i'll use this and I kind of got lost in it. I was doing the storyboards, but the ending wasn't strong enough. And I was like ready to quit almost. And that's when um, I, a friend of mine, Michel Pirous, who's a comic uh, artist and also writer, and he collaborates with other people. I was <laughs> telling him my problem, and I showed him all the, you know, what I had. And I was like, I like this, I like this. And it was nice to have someone to, have, um, to bounce ideas off of. And so then we started constructing the script between the two of us and acting stuff out as we were writing. And um, when you were designing the storyboards for uh, your last piece, mm -hmm. uh, did you have to explore some of like, the, uh, the trickery of light and dark to portray like, what you were trying to get so, so you can get the actual fear? I mean, obviously on the piece it's quite, you're very good at like showing like certain bits of like the hands and stuff, so you can only see certain things. Did you have to like go through certain stages of research where you had to sort of practice with different types of light? And oh yeah, I mean, I, we did so many tests at the beginning because I knew I wanted this really sparse look from the start, and um, I remember trying, you know, the first attempts. I would, I would, I would, I drew out pretty extensive um, storyboards, but still trying to translate that to working with animators, because I said, OK, it's going to be black, but you're only going to see this little piece of light. And then they would say, oh, that's no problem. We'll just animate this little window. And I was like, no, no, no. We have to animate everything and then turn all the lights off, because that's the only way it's going to feel grounded. And so they, they, they humored me and did one piece. When, and they, got, they understood once they could see, because it's, it's really important, especially like that scene when he's first discovering the house and he's walking across from the, and then you see the staircase uh, revealed. Um, that was all drawn, everything, you know, the full figure and everything, and then we just reduced it all. But, and to make it feel correct and that he had weight, and, and we showed those pencil tests to the sound people to make the um, steps in the right way. And I knew I was going to have that scene where it's totally black, when he goes into the dark. And, and the storyboard, it's just like, you know, you see this black, black, black. And I'm trying to describe what I want. And I had, for the entire film, I made a uh, scratch soundtrack uh, to talk to the sound engineers to explain. And especially for a scene like that, it's like, I'm imagining he's in there, and he's you know, reaching for a coat hanger, and he's trying to pick the lock. And I'm, I'm, so I, had to, I couldn't just, you know, I had to actually show them that, uh, how that's going to you know, work. And um, so. I hope that answers your question. I'm like rambling here, but, but no, not at all. Not but at all. Uh, I think for many people, it will surprise you. But it absolutely makes absolute sense that, that to have the convincing effect that you're really looking through a tiny bit of light to see a bigger, complete setting. That it was all there, and it really feels like it's there, even if it is all yeah. Covered like there's that, this yeah, you can't the, fake that really. Can when you? when that um, the one moment where the fire gets really huge and the room lights up for one <laughs> second, then it goes down again. <laughs> you see a piano for a split second in the background. Mm -hmm. But after he falls through the hole and he's trying to climb out of the hole, and he puts his hand up, you hear this dissonant piano um, chord, you know, yeah. from him climbing out. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, I suppose I was, you know, 
always wanted it to be, you know, I knew that, that it was going to be, you know, mostly not seen, but mm -hmm. I, I had to have these little elements to make it feel mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. real.